welcome to my channel IT smart training our today's video is on types of elastic block storage EBS so if my video is informative please like the video and subscribe the channel and one thing I want to tell you that this video is very interesting uh, please watch till end uh, don't skip as well as I just start my video Amazon Elastic Block Store Amazon EBS so at first we have to know that uh, Amazon Elastic Block Storage what is uh, Elastic Block Store what is Block Store actually if you want to know about the Block Storage uh, you can see my previous video where I describe about the difference between the Block Storage as well as the Object Storage please see my last video uh, I just tell you very briefly uh, what is a block storage just block storage is nothing but a, a, a mechanism where the data is stored into the hard disk in block storage the data are stored uh, into the its data is divided into the blocks and it's stored into the hard disk so that's why it's called the block storage if you want to know more about the block storage you just check my previous video so Amazon Elastic Block Storage EBS provides block level storage volumes for use with EC2 instance this is only used by the EC2 instance EBS volume behave like raw unformatted block devices it is a raw disk it is just like an unformatted but I just buy a new hard disk from the market is a raw hard disk the data is but there is no uh, file level over there just a raw hard disk uh, so EBS volume is just like a, a raw hard disk um, and that is also unformatted so you can mount these volumes or as a as a devices on your instances you just mount it you can mount multiple volumes on the same instance and you can mount a volume to the multiple instance at a time so you just uh, this is a very uh, good features of EVS EVS actually a, a, a network storage actually so this is not attached into the server it is a network storage you just uh, uh, just set into a mount. This is not a uh, uh, attached storage. That is a shared storage, or the the server is somewhere else, the storage server, or the SAN. So you can mount these volumes as drives on into the instances. You can mount multiple volumes on the same instance, and you can mount a volume to multiple instances at a time. Same in instance into multiple. Uh, uh, you can attach multiple volume into same instances and also you can attach the same volume into multiple instances you can create a file system on top of these volumes just formatted like NTFS, FAT32, EXT4 whatever you want use them in any way you would use a block device like a hard drive you can dynamically change the configurations of volume attached to an instances EVS volumes are highly available and, and reliable storage volumes that can be attached to any running instances that is the same availability zone this is very important the EVS volume are the same availability zone this is very important point so EVS volumes are highly available and reliable storage volumes that can be attached to any running instances that is the same availability zone if you want to attach any other availability zones EVS volume into your instances that is not actually possible so EVS volumes that are attached to the EC2 instances 
are exposed as a storage volumes that persist independently from the life of your instances with the amazon ebs you pay only for what you use so next is you can attach multiple volumes to the same instance within the limits specified by your aws account you can attach evs multiple volume into your instances i just told you just a few minutes before so this is possible but there have some limitations over your account this is depends on your account your account has a limit on number of evs volume that you can use and the total storage available to you that is very important point next amazon evs is recommended when data must be quickly accessible and requires a long term persistence so in term uh, when we use the amazon ebs volume where we can get quickly access the storage and we want to use this is a long term so then only we can use the amazon ebs so ebs volumes are particularly well suited for use as a primary storage for file systems databases or for any applications that require fine granular updates and access to raw unformatted block level storage amazon ebs is a well suited to both database style applications that rely on the random read writes where we can where the random read writes are available just all the users are randomly reads and writes your hard disk so in that way in that scenario we can use the ebs volume and to the throughput intensive applications that perform a long and continuous reads and writes also we can use not only the database we can also use the long and uh, throughput intensive applications that perform a long so in that scenario we can use the ebs volume next we want to know about the features of amazon ebs and what are the features of that so first we have to know that availability zone availability zone we already uh, uh, learn about the availability zone in my if you if you want to learn about the availability zone in details you just check my last video in my video playlist so i just tell you just some briefly informations of availability zone regard uh, as a respect of the aws ebs so evs volumes are created in a specific availability zone suppose i just create a specific availability zone in the uh, uh, mumbai and can then be attached to any instances in the same availability zone and i just attached uh, uh, this ebs volume into a uh, instance named just i just named uh, uh, linux okay linux 1 to make a volume available outside the availability zone you can create a snapshot and restore that snapshot to a new volume anywhere in the region if you want to access that volume outside of your availability zone by default that is not possible and ebs volume is not accessible to the uh, other availability zone i already told you so for that we have to take a snapshot and restore the snapshot to a new volume anywhere in the region okay you can copy that snapshot to other region and then restore them to a new volumes there making it easier to leverage multiple aws region geographical expansions data center migrations and dgst recovery so in that way you can uh, create all these things so this is the way so this this is the way we can use uh, when we are uh, uh, 
actually configured the disaster recovery site so for that we just create the uh, snapshot and just uh, copy the snapshot to other storage and that storage uh, in the other availability zone and then we restore that snapshot into the virtual machine so this is the way next we have some volume types as per the Amazon Amazon EBS provide the following volume types what are the volume types? General Purpose SSD, GP2, Provision IPOS SSD, IO1, Throughput Optimized HDD, SD1, Cold HDD, SC1. These are the following EBS volume types. But there are some more EBS volume types which we read or which we learn in my next slide. So this is the EBS volume types. So EBS volume types are divided into three parts. One is a solid state drive SSD. Second one is a hard disk type HDD. And last one is the previous generation volume or the magnetic storage. Under solid state drive SSD, there are three parts. One is the EVL general purpose SSD, which is a GP2. Next is EVS provisions IPOS, IOPS, uh, IOPS SSD, that is IO1. Next is EVS provisions IOPS SSD, IO2. These are the solid state drive types. And GP2, IO1, and IO2, these are the VM types, instance types. Under the hard disk, there are two options. One is a throughput optimized HDD that is called ST1 another one is coal HDD that is SC1 and last one is a previous generation volumes out of the magnetic storage in this video we will describe each and every volume types one by one I just start with the solid state drive then we learn about the hard disk and the previous generation volume and here we just learn or the heard the new terminology that is IOPS also we know about the IOPS what is IOPS so my next slide is what is IOPS the full form of IOPS is input output operation per second so now we we are learned about the what is IOPS IOPS input output operation per second which is the full form of IOPS is the standard unit of measurement for the maximum number of reads and writes to non contiguous storage locations this is a measurement unit where we can measure the reads and writes to non contiguous storage locations IOPS is pronounced like IOPS this is not IOPS this is IOPS one of some of my students they are uh, uh, pronounced like this this is uh, uh, IOPS so that is not like that the pronunciation is proper pronunciation is IOPS IOPS OPS so next IOPS is frequently referenced by storage vendors to characterize performance in solid state drives hard disk drives storage area networks however an IOPS number is not an actual benchmark and the numbers promoted by vendors may not correspond to a real world performance this is the very important point along with the transfer rate which measures how fast data can be transferred from continuous storage location IOPS can be used to measure storage performance while transfer rate is measured is bytes IOPS measured as a integer and the 
operations are measured in KIB. So IOP represent how quickly storage device can read and write in every second. This is the one line answer. What is IOPS? IOPS is represent how quickly a storage device can read and write in every second. That is IOPS. Here is KIB Kibibyte. You just learn about, you heard about kilobyte. So here is the unit is Kibibyte. This is the unit of data. One kibibyte equals to one zero two four bytes. So this is very important. One kil not a kilobyte. One kibibyte equals to one zero two four bytes. One kilobyte equals to one thousand bytes. And one kibibyte kilobyte a kibibyte equals to one zero two four bytes. I just explain you. Uh, in my next slide just wait so here is the differences between kilobytes versus kibibytes so what is kilobytes and what is kibibytes I just told you this terminology because in future we are using uh, this terminology so you have to learn about all this terminology inside it so at first we have to know about the kilobytes versus kibibyte a kibibyte is a unit of a data storage that equals 2 to 10th power or 1024 while a kilobyte can estimate 2 to the power 3 equals to 1000 bytes a kilobyte is exactly 1024 bytes you just fit into your mind Kilo kibibyte is a unit of the data storage that is equal to 2 to the power 10 which is 1024 while kilobyte is estimated as 10 to the power 3 where is 1000 kibibyte is exactly 1024 bytes not 1000 bytes this is to avoid ambiguity associated with the with the size of kilobytes a kibibyte is 1024 bytes and besides the maybe bytes you need of measurement Sometimes, as defined by a uh, international systems of unit, the prefix kilo refers to thousand or ten to the power three. Most storage manufacturer measures and level capacity in base ten. One kilobyte equals to one thousand bytes. One megabyte equals to 1000 kilobytes and 1 gigabyte equals to 1000 megabytes 1 terabyte equals to 1000 gigabytes RAM vendors and most operating system however use base 2 1 kilobyte equals to 1024 bytes 1 megabyte equals to 1024 kilobytes 1 gigabyte equals to 1024 megabytes and 1 terabyte equals to 1024 gigabytes this is why the kibibyte is important kilo and giga etc is uh, ambiguous when it is used to mean both 1000 and 1024 so a new set of binary prefix were established by the international electronical commission in 1998 to crucial the confusion other prefixes included maybe gibi tebi and pebi to replace mega giga tera and peta respectively this is the chart where is measured 
all these kilobyte and kibibyte values in the left hand side this is the definition define uh, decimal prefix and these are the binary prefix where 10 to the power 3 is value is 1000 here 10 to the power 10 value is 1024 so these are the flow chart of kilo mega giga tera peta exa zeta iota in my next slide I, I we just want to know about the ipos latency and throughput throughput measures how many units of information a system can process in a period of time it can refer to the number of IO operations per second it just measure uh, IO operations but is typically measured in bytes per second on their own IOPS and input cannot provide an accurate performance measurement as per the AW8 it measures a data transfer rate and from the storage media in megabytes per second so it's based what is throughput throughput is measures how many units of information a system can process in a period of time that is the throughput so it this throughput is referred as a IO operation per second okay so next what is latency latency measures the time between issuing a request and receiving a response with regards to IOPS latency is measure of a length of time it takes for a single IO request to be completed from the application point of view when we I just give you an example when we send a ping request what it does it just I just ping to the destination host destination host receive the packet and if it is their packet this destination host is replying me yes I got the packet so when it says I got a packet we get a reply when I initiate the packet and when I receive the packet the in between the gap that is called the latency how much time it is take sometimes we get uh, we take uh, uh, so many milliseconds to uh, resolve this uh, request so that is the latency that time is the latency I just take that reply with one millisecond or I just take the reply with 100 200 millisecond some time request timeout that is called the latency next our first general purpose SSD which is GP2 which is described about GP2 a general purpose SSD GP2 volumes offer cost effective storage that is uh, ideal for a broad range for workloads so this is a very cost effective this is a very cheap uh, SSD which is the ideal where the workload are heavy in that scenario we can perform a uh, SSD to perform that task this volume deliver single digit millisecond latencies a very very low latency is just uh, provide a single digit millisecond latency 1 to 9 a GP2 volume can range in size 1 GP to 16 TB we can use this uh, GP to volume minimum 
is 1 GB, maximum is 16 TB. TB byte. Durability is 99.8 to 99.9. Durability never down. Use cases. This are these general purpose SSDs are used as a boot volumes, low latency interactive apps, development, testing environments, small and medium sized databases. We can use this kind of general purpose SSD. So maximum IOPS per volume of this general purpose SSD is 10,000. Okay. So maximum IOPS and throughput are generated only on the instance built on the Nitro systems. This performance 10,000 IOPS we can get only when this system is built on the Nitro systems. So we have to know about the Nitro system. What is Nitro system? In my next video we just describe, so not the next video, in my next slide we just describe about the Nitro system. Next, next point is the maximum throughput per volume is 250 millibytes. The throughput limits in between 128 millibytes to 250 millibytes depending on the volume size. This is the maximum throughput. So now we have we have learned about the Nitro system very briefly. The Nitro system is a very vast technology very vast informations are there I just collage all the informations into some of the, my slide so I just describe all these informations to you the AWS Nitro system is the underlying platform for your next generation EC2 instances that enables AWS to innovative faster further reduce cost for your customers and deliver added benefits like increased security and new instance types all these things so how these are the possible we will one by one describe AWS has completely reimagined our virtualization infrastructure is just reimagined. Traditionally, hypervisor protect the physical hardware and BIOS. Traditionally, we are using ESXi or others uh, KVM uh, virtualizations that all are uh, protect our physical hardware and BIOS. Virtualize the CPU storage networking and provide a rich set of management capabilities with the Nitro system. We are able to break apart those functions, follow them to dedicated hardware and software and reduce cost by delivering practically all of the resources of a server to your instances. Nitro systems are three important components like Nitro cards, Nitro security chip, Nitro hypervisor. These are the available parts of the Nitro, Nitro system. So here the Nitro system parts. There are three parts in Nitro system. First is Nitro cards. In AWS they are using some own manufacturing some Nitro cards for using VPC networking, Amazon EBS and instant storage and system controller. As well as AWS use a Nitro security chip which is integrated into the server motherboard protects hardware resource, hardware routes afterwards. In my previous generation you can see the hypervisor can protect the hardware and the other thing and the BIOS but in the new technology Nitro system the Nitro security chip is the it is a 
chip which is uh, installed when the motherboard is manufacturer of the server and that chip is protect all these information hardware resources next is nitro hypervisor aws just reimagine the hypervisor and create a low li lightweight hypervisor uh, uh, which is based on kvm and just the memory and cpu allocations just like work the bare metal like performance it is a very fast and prompt next come to the nitro cards Ni aws uses ena pci controller where they install a nitro cards in the vpc and the other hand they are using nvme pci controller there is a transparent encryptions over there they are all they are used for uh, a nvme pci controller for evs data plan there is a system control which is a root of trust this all these cards are used over there so suppose the previous generations vm uh, if i if i get a maximum bandwidth of 25 mbps the new generations uh, uh, instances with the nitro technology we are getting same configurations same interface we are getting around 100 100 gbps in previous generation we are getting maximum throughput maximum throughput is at 25 gbps in the new generation we can get maximum to 1000 gbps the same virtual instances so the nitro card for vpc so it is a ena controller uh, drivers available for all major operating system uh, uh this is independent of fabric the vpc can encapsulate the data security groups are available limiters and routings are also available into the into it this is this the, this is the uh, uh, nitro card functions for vpc while we using vpc we are using a nitro card this is a normal pci card which is uh, using on into the server next the nitro card for ev ebs uh, uh, in the amazon block storage there is also use a nitro card uh, where the nvme controllers uh, standard drivers uh, broadly available the drivers uh, EBS data plans are encrypted support and NVM to remote storage protocol. So Nitro card for instance storage. Instance storage is basically uh, I just tell about uh, uh, in EBS we just just uh, just a few minutes ago we just started we just uh, read that uh, it is a I told you that it is a Share storage. The storage is some other locations, but some of the vendors, some of the companies uh, get required uh, for the uh, local storage, which is physically attached to the server. In that scenario, we can uh, we can use uh, the instant storage. In instant storage. Uh, there is are also an NVMe controllers are there. Standard drivers are broadly available. This is a transfer as encryptions, limiters, and drive monitorings can also be available uh, in this card. If I install this card, this performance is far better than normal server. A Nitro card controller. This Nitro card controller. Provides a passive API endpoint, cordless all other Nitro cards, 
So it's provide the passive API endpoint, coordinates all other Nitro cards, coordinates with the Nitro hypervisor, coordinate with the Nitro security chips. So this Nitro controller do all these things and as well as provide the measurement and attentions for the hardware. This is a hardware root of trust. Nitro security chip. This is a custom microcontroller that traps all the IOs to non-volatile storage. Which is my non-volatile storage? This traps all the IOs. Controllable from the Nitro controller to hold the system boot provides a simple hardware based root of trust. This is the function of the security chip which is uh, built in into the motherboard. So this, there is a scenario where is uh, written the hardware root of trust. This is my instance you can see this is my instance, this is my Nitro controller, this is my Nitro security chip, this is my BIOS or BMC and all these things. Nitro security, Nitro controller can control this security chip and this security chip, this instance and the BMC are operated by this security chip. So, so here all write access to non-volatile storage is blocked in hardware. If I write something to the in to the instances to the BIOS, it just block. Simple to understand security to leak of legacy. Next is come to a Nitro hypervisor. Nitro hypervisor is a KVM based hypervisor with custom MM and small user space. Only executes on behalf of instance With the Nitro, the hypervisor can be fast and simple. This is a very lightweight hypervisor technology which is invented by AWS. This is a KVM based hypervisor and very lightweight hypervisor. Uh, and the new generations, all the instances are um, uh, hosted into this hypervisor. Next, I just come to the software updates. All the software of these Nitro cards are available or not. So, this is my Nitro in my left hand. This is my Nitro hypervisor, and the Nitro cards are over here. Software deployed to server in a control fashion, Nitro hypervisor and Nitro cards are updated safely. Customer instances continue running on the same server during update. If I update the driver of the uh, hypervisor or the Nitro card, uh, the instances are continued to running and safe during update. So next just come to the provisioned IOPS SSD, the next uh, store SSD storage types which is the IO1 and the IO2. IO1 and the IO2 both are the same but if I define, if I segregate all the functions are the same, if I segregate with the IO1 and IO2 IO2 is better than IO2, IO1. IO2's performance is better than IO1. So, what is the provisions IOPS SSD's functions are the available? I just tell you. First, provides a high performance for mission critical, low latency, or high throughput workloads. We are using this kind of SSD. 
durability is 99.999% and 99 98.99% uh, durability for IO2 and 99.8 to 99.9% .9 durability to IO1 so IO2 is durability is better than IO1 use cases where we are using workloads that required more than 16000 IOPS IO intensive database workloads boot root volume in that scenario we are using this kind of uh, hard disk next volume size volume size minimum is 4 GB and we can max we can take the maximum volume that is 16 TB TB not TB TB bytes max IOPS per volumes max IOPS per volume is 64,000 maximum IOPS and throughputs are guaranteed only on the instances built on the Nitro systems if previous generations instances are using we cannot get that IOPS performance it is only uh, uh, get into the Nitro systems instances maximum throughput per volume is 1000 millibytes next throughput optimize HDD ST1 throughput optimize HDD volumes provide a low cost magnetic storage that defines performance in terms of throughput rather than IOPS these volumes are ideal for large sequential workloads such as an Amazon EMR, ETL data warehouse or log processing. A low cost HDD designed for frequently accessed throughput intensive workloads. Use cases for the big data, data warehouse, log processing. We cannot use this kind of throughput optimized HDD for root or boot volume. And next, the volume size we can configure over here 500 GB byte to 16 TB bytes. Maximum IOPS per volume is 500. Maximum throughput per volume is 500 millibytes per second. Durability is 99.8% to 99.9%. Our next hard disk type is cold HDD volumes, SC1. Cold HDD volumes provide a low cost magnetic storage that defines performance in terms of the throughput rather than the IOPS. These volumes are ideal for large sequential cold data workloads. If you require infrequent access to your data and are looking to save cost, these volumes provide inexpensive block storage. There are several uh, points I just written over here that is first low cost HDD volume designed for less frequently access workloads where we can use the use cases are throughput oriented storage for data that is frequently accessed scenarios where the lowest storage cost is important volume size is 500 GB bytes to 16 TB bytes maximum we can use for the volume maximum IOPS per volume is 250 maximum throughput per volume is 250 MB or durability is 99.8 to 99.9 percent next our previous generations volume or the magnetic standard EBS magnetic volumes are the backed by hard disk types this volume types I just all I just told you these volumes types are uh, previously we can use in AWS but in AWS there are so many volumes types are invented and attached into our portal so uh, these volumes types are generally not used uh, 
if we want to found if we want to get that volume type we can get this is with the name the standard only the standard the standard volume is the previous generation volume or the magnetic standard volume so magnetic standard volumes are backed by hard disk drive and can be used to workloads with the smaller data sheets where the data is accessed infrequently or when the performance cons consistency isn't of primary importance so when we use this suppose we uh, have a, a huge amount of petabytes of data and we uh, need to access that data uh, we, uh, yearly, yearly maybe 10 to 30 10 to 20 times monthly maybe 2 to 3 times in that scenario we can use this kind of hard disk Next, Amazon recommended that you consider Amazon EPS general purpose volume GP2 or other volumes types instead of standard volume. It's a recommendations because you got a better performance with the same price. Use cases where we can use workloads where data is infrequently accessed can be used these volumes can be used by um, um, as a boot or root volume as well volume size minimum is 1 GB byte to 1 TB bytes maximum IOPS per volumes to 40 to 200 maximum throughputs per volume to 40 to 90 MB bytes so you can see that this is a very slow performance uh, volumes so uh, you can uh, if you want you can Text, but the Amazon recommended if you uh, if you are want to using this uh, magnetic standard volume you just go to the EBS general purpose SSD so next point is EBS volume as an encrypted volumes this is the features of AWS you can create a EBS volume as an encrypted volume this is the features of AWS. In order to meet a wide range of data at risk encryption requirements for regulated and audited data and applications, when you create an encrypted EVS volumes and attach to it a supported instance types data stored at risk on the volumes, this IO and snapshot created from the volume are all encrypted. The encrypted occur, encryption occur on the servers that host EC2 instances providing encryption of data in transit from EC2 instances to EBS storage. So we will later on we will uh, uh, elaborately learn about the uh, EBS encrypted volume as well as we will see the lab for the encrypted volume next is point in time snapshots of EVS volume you can create point in time snapshot of EVS volume which are stored into the Amazon S3 snapshots protect data for long-term durability and then they can be used as the starting point for the new EVS volume the same snapshot can be used to instances as many volumes as you wish this snapshot can be copied across the AWS region so this snapshot is also we can read about in my next uh, videos where we uh, describe about the snapshots and all these things elaborately so this is all about my EBS volume theoretical part so if my video is informative please like the video and subscribe my channel see you on next video thank you